Hello children, this is Arshini from Janta.com. Today, I want to share with you a very beautiful story related to pi. Of course, you have heard about pi. It's the circumference by diameter of any circle. But there is a very interesting place of pi in all of mathematics. It comes up in unexpected places like these two formulas which are two of my most favorite formulas in all of mathematics. One is e to the power i pi is equals to minus one and the other one which sort of leads to normal distribution probability theory is the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the power minus x squared dx. This turns out to be square root of pi. These two formulas connect two of the most beautiful numbers in mathematics. The Euler number, or e, is approximately 2.71 and pi, which is 3.14. Some other day, I want to talk to you about these two formulas separately. They have a fascinating story. However, today, I want to talk specifically about pi. I was actually discussing this with my students in the Math Olympiad program. We often do this. I mean, we want to solve beautiful problems, but we also want to explore the depths of the concepts to expand our breadth of understanding. So let's go ahead and talk about this particular story related to pi. It is how the entire mathematics changed with a mathematician from India from about 700 years ago. So, to get started, let me first tell you what is a number line. So, a number line is basically a straight line where you mark the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And then, of course, you mark the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Now, mathematicians have tried to approximate the value of pi since antiquity. They have tried to carefully measure it and then carefully write down all the digits of it. One way is called the geometric approximation. What you do is you draw a circle. You can draw a unit circle. Then you have to divide by just 2. The circumference divided by 2 is pi then. So you draw a unit circle. You draw the diameter of it. So you have the semicircle on two sides of it. The length of a semicircle of a unit circle, this length in red, is represented by that pi because it's half of the entire circumference, right? So what you do is you play a game, you start at the point A, you draw a radius length like this, call it B, draw another length of radius, write C, and come back here, okay, maybe this is D. And you can, if you do it exactly three times, then you would be back three times more, you'd be back at the starting point. So, here we go. Like so. This is a very interesting property of a circle. You usually start with the radius length, and if you do it six times, just what I have done, then you will be back at the starting point. Not seven times, not five times, exactly six times. It's a very basic geometric fact. And since these are kind of bulging out a bit, so obviously, circumference, circumference 
is greater than 6. All of these lengths are 1. So the total perimeter of the polygon is 6. So circumference is greater than 6 or circumference by 2 is greater than 6 by 2. So the so pi, which is defined as circumference by 2, is greater than 3. So what we did is an approximation of the value of pi. We found that the value of pi is greater than 3. So we are here now in the number line. And pi is somewhere here on the right of the number 3. So what we are doing is we are approximating pi from the left. Now, what human beings did after that, they made the approximation a little bit better. So they saw that, okay, pi is a little bit more than 3. So this is 3. Pi is a little bit more than that. So maybe I can go a small amount after 3 and then get closer to pi. So first they did 3, then they saw that you cannot fit in one more. So they went 0 0.1 after that. I'm not drawing this to scale. So now we are a bit closer to pi, and then they did 0 0.04, 0 0.04. Now I'm again a bit closer to pi. So like this, they keep kept on doing it. And the, when you reach here, you are basically getting 3.14. This is still less than the value of pi, but a bit closer to it than 3. Now, one of the fun games that mathematicians used to play at that time is that approximate as many values of pi as you can. As many values of pi as you can. So... This game went on for at least a thousand years. From Greece to India, many mathematicians did that. Hundreds of digits of pi were discovered. But none of them did what, around 700 years ago, what Madhava did. So he was a mathematician from Kerala which is a part of India in the southern tip of India. And he discovered something outstanding that changed mathematics forever. Instead of approaching pi from the left, he did this hop left, hop right approach. Hop left, hop right. What is this? Well, Madhava said that, okay, again, draw a number line. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on. So suppose you are standing at the point 0. You hop to the right 4 units. Now you're here. Okay, hop to the right four units. Then you hop to the left. Hop to the left. So plus four, hop to the left four thirds. Hop to the left four thirds. So four thirds means it's approximately 1.33. So you hop to the left four thirds. So basically you go back one and a third unit. So now you're here somewhere. Right? So minus four third. Now you do hop to the right four fifths. So you go this way four fifths. Somewhere here. Then hop to the left four sevenths. And you see he is continuously Moving right and left, right and left. He's doing that. This is very weird. He's not making the approximations better. 
but he's sort of oscillating right, left, right, left, right, left, like this. And what Madhava said is that if you do this, if you keep on doing this, of course you understand what we will do next. It's four by nines. And you know what we will do next. It's four by elevens. Left, right, left, right. Keep on moving. Then, then something weird happens. You get, you get as close to high as you want. This is absolutely fantastic. Because this sentence, you get as close to pi as you want, is the meaning of a limit of a series or a sequence. And the concept of limit is the foundation of calculus, which most people know that was created by Newton and Leibniz about 300 years after Madhava. So in a sense, Madhava founded the um, ideas of calculus with his admired series. I'll tell you why this idea is so revolutionary. Until the Madhava's time, a number, let's say the number um, five, was regarded as a single number, as one thing, as a static object. It's just a number five. It's five things. What Madhava did, he made the entire thing dynamic. He made the entire thing a process. He said, a number is not a particular object. It's a series. You can represent it as a series, as an infinite series. This will go on, of course. So, it's a philosophical shift in the mindset. Now, I'm not thinking of pi as a single number, but I'm thinking of pi as a repeated calculation of this series infinitely many times. And of course, the process never completes because we cannot ever complete infinitely many operations. So in a way, pi is a finite number, of course, but it is captured by a, an infinite process. A finite number got captured by an infinite process. This shift in the mindset completely changed mathematics forever. It's a dynamic thing. A number is also a dynamic thing. It's a limit. Every number is a limit of a sequence, of an infinite sequence. I'll give you a challenge question. Can you tell me a sequence of which 5 is the limit? It's a static number, I think. You were probably imagining it as five things, but I challenge you to think of five as represented by an infinite series, which is hop left, hop right, hop left, hop right. An infinite series can be of many types, but this one, I want you to find out something hop left, hop right, hop left, hop right. And you, it's not very hard. It's not very hard. You can try to figure it out. So if you can, please put it in the comment section. I hope you learned something and you thought about something today from this video. You reflected on some areas of mathematics. Tomorrow, we'll probably post another video. But uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.